All right, I'm here again with some fresh AI tool releases, and these ones are pretty wild. We've got a tool that lets you edit only specific parts of an image while leaving everything else pixel perfect untouched. We've got another one that upscales videos in real time. We've got a third tool that generates talking head avatars live at 24 frames per second for real-time video calls and streaming. And we've got another tool that generates 3D character animations from text prompts. Let's jump right in. First up, we've got Spot Edit, and this one's actually pretty clever. So normally when you edit an image with AI, the entire image gets regenerated from scratch, even the parts you don't want to change. Spot Edit flips that on its head. It only edits the specific region you want to modify and leaves everything else completely untouched. Let me show you what I mean. Check out this example. We've got a dog with a football, and we tell it to convert the football into a sunflower. Look at the result. The sunflower shows up exactly where the football was, but the rest of the image? Pixel perfect identical to the original. If you look at that blue highlighted region, that's the only area Spot Edit actually regenerated. Nothing else was touched. Same deal with this giant pineapple lying in the grass. We give it the prompt, pineapple, to cup. And boom, the pineapple becomes a cup. The grass, the lighting, the background, all exactly the same. The regenerated region shows it only modified that cup area and left everything else alone. Here's another one that's really practical. We've got a car trunk and the prompt is, add a suitcase. It drops a suitcase right into the trunk. And again, if you check the region map, the editing happened only where the suitcase is. You can also add accessories to images. This cat gets a muffler and a hat added perfectly with the regenerated region limited to just those items. Or this lake scene where we want to add a person. It places the person seamlessly and the rest of the lake and surroundings stay identical. Now it gets even cooler. You can change actions. This woman raises her hand to her head when we give it that prompt, and same with this guy. We tell him to raise his hand, and he does. You can also do adjustments like color changes. This person's jacket goes from black to blue, and look at the regenerated region. It's literally just the jacket. The bicycle example is the same, black to red, and only the bicycle surface changed. You can even remove objects. We want to remove this person from the scene, and Spot Edit doesn't just erase them, it intelligently regenerates the background, adding the building's pillars back in perfectly. Same with removing this child from a photo, cleanly removed with flawless background restoration. And of course, you can replace objects. This girl sitting down gets replaced with a flower pot, and the entire rest of the image stays exactly as it was. So, how does Spot Edit actually pull this off? It comes down to two really smart components. First, there's Spot Selector, which is basically a detection system that figures out which parts of the image are staying the same and which parts need to change. It does this by measuring something called perceptual similarity. It compares the early reconstruction to the original image and identifies regions that have stabilized early in the diffusion process. Those stable regions get classified as non-edited, and Spot Edit just skips regenerating them entirely. The second component is Spot Fusion, which keeps everything coherent. When you skip certain regions, you need to make sure the edited parts still blend naturally with the unchanged areas. Spot Fusion adaptively blends features from the original image with the new content based on the current timestamp, so you don't get weird boundary artifacts or mismatches. It's all training-free, which means it works on top of existing models without needing any fine-tuning. And here's the kicker. Spot Edit is actually faster than normal editing. On the IMG Edit benchmark, it achieves a 1.7 times speed up, and on PyBench, it's 1.9 times faster, all while maintaining the same quality as the original model. That's because it's literally skipping all the unnecessary computation on parts of the image that don't need to change. Now for the good news. The code has been released on GitHub. They've made the inference code available for two different base models, Flux Context and Quen Image Edit, so you can actually try this out yourself. The link to the project page will be in the description if you want to dive deeper into it. Next up, we have StreamDiff VSR, and this one's a game changer for video upscaling. This is essentially a real-time video super resolution tool that can upscale videos on the fly with incredibly low latency. The full name is Low Latency Streamable Video Super Resolution via Auto Regressive Diffusion, which is a mouthful, but basically it means you could actually use this for live streaming. If you're broadcasting and want to upscale your content in real time, this makes it possible. 
Let me show you just how fast this thing is. You can see a timer running at the top of the screen here, and this test was done on a single NVIDIA 4090. Their baseline diffusion model is chugging along, still processing, but look at their new online model, StreamDiff VSR Online. It's already done. The difference is insane. The maximum frame latency is less than one second, sitting at just 0.328 seconds, while their baseline diffusion VSR model has a latency of 4,620 seconds. That's over three orders of magnitude faster. They achieved this using a distillation technique that shrunk the process down massively. Now let's look at some actual results. Here's a before and after comparison. The before image is pretty noisy and blurry. This is handheld phone footage. The after image is dramatically clearer with way better detail. Here's another example from a market scene. You can see there's tons of camera shake and blur. It's not stable footage at all. In the output, the shakiness is still there because it's not doing stabilization, but the quality has been massively upscaled. The resolution and clarity are significantly better. Same thing with this street footage shot from a moving camera. There's noise, it's obviously low resolution, but in the after version, there's a huge improvement. The noise is largely gone and the blurriness is drastically reduced. Here's footage of cars passing on a main road. The camera's stable here, no shake, but you'll notice noise and blur. The after version shows substantial improvement. This is a 4x upscaler, meaning it's upscaling the video four times the original resolution. Look at this one in slow motion. The difference between before and after is massive. The noise is almost completely removed, and the resolution becomes much sharper. Here's someone playing the drums. The before has quite a bit of noise, but the after is much cleaner, and also upscaled by 4x. They've also compared it against a bunch of other upscaling models. RVRT, Real Basic VSR, Stable VSR, Basic VSR++, and others. The result in the bottom right is from StreamDiff VSR, and you can see it's noticeably better than the competition. The perceptual quality measured by LPIS is superior, and the temporal consistency is really strong. So, how does this actually work under the hood? StreamDiff VSR uses an autoregressive diffusion framework with three key components. First, they distilled a standard diffusion model that normally takes 50 denoising steps down to just four steps. That's where the massive speedup comes from. Second, they've got something called Autoregressive Temporal Guidance, or ARTG, which injects motion-aligned cues from previous frames during the denoising process. Basically, it uses optical flow to warp the previous high-quality frame and feeds that information back into the model to maintain temporal consistency. Third, they have a lightweight temporal-aware decoder with a temporal processing module that enhances detail and keeps everything coherent across frames. The whole system operates strictly on past frames only, making it truly online and causal, no waiting for future frames like traditional methods. The code has been released on their GitHub repo. You can see the model weights and inference code are both available now. The trading code is still on the way, but you can already run this locally. On a single 4090, the latency for 720p frames is specifically 0.328 seconds, which is ridiculously fast for a diffusion model. All the installation and usage instructions are there. I'll drop the link to the project page in the description so you can check it out and try it yourself. Next up, we've got Live Talk, and this one's targeting real-time avatar generation for live streaming, video calls, and chatbots. The full description is real-time multimodal interactive video diffusion via improved on-policy distillation. Basically, they took OmniAvatar, which is a multimodal diffusion model, and distilled it down to make it way faster. They're claiming a 20x speedup over the base model using an improved distillation approach with a four-step autoregressive process. Let me show you some examples of what this looks like in action. You can see in this video, the avatar here is Elon Musk. The interviewer, the woman on the left, is real and is acting as if she's interviewing the actual Elon Musk. Our weeks stick to first principles. Physics, atoms, truth, delete parts till it breaks, add back one. My last prototype exploded though. No explosion, no innovation. Now, to be honest, if you look at the quality, it's not amazing. They've distilled this model so aggressively to hit real-time performance that the visual quality has taken a hit. It works, but it doesn't look super realistic yet. Here's another example. Real person on the left, generated avatar on the right. Again, you can see there are some quality issues. It doesn't quite look photorealistic. 
The fact that you can swap your face to an avatar in real time is impressive from a technical standpoint, but for this to be truly usable, the realism needs to improve significantly. The system achieves approximately 24.82 frames per second with a 0.33 second first frame latency, which is genuinely real time. It also supports text, image, and audio input for flexible avatar control, meaning you can drive the avatar using any combination of those modalities. The inference time for the baseline Omni avatar model was around 83 seconds per generation, which they've compressed down to real time using this four-step distillation technology. They also claim it has multi-turn coherence, meaning it can maintain consistency across a conversation, and they say it's competitive with VO3 and Sora 2, though I personally wasn't fully convinced by the results. They've also integrated this with audio language models, specifically QN3 Omni, which handles the reasoning and speech generation. So you can use this as a real-time conversational AI where the avatar responds to you with synchronized video and audio on the fly. For the hardware requirements, you need at least 24 gigabytes of VRAM to run this. They tested it on an RTX 4090, an A800, and an H800, all on Linux with 64 gigabytes of RAM, and it successfully delivered real-time performance across those setups. The code and model weights have been released on GitHub, and complete installation and usage instructions are available there. I'll put the link in the description so you can check it out and try it yourself if you've got the hardware for it. All right, last up, we've got Hunyan Motion 1.0, and this one's pretty impressive. This is a 1 billion parameter model that was just released as open source by Tencent's Hunyan team, and it's specifically built for 3D character animation. You can generate animations for any 3D character you create using just text prompts. The work from the Hunyan team on this is genuinely solid. Let me walk you through some examples. The text prompt here is, a person sits down on a chair. This is just a standard 3D character, but check out the animation. You can see the character sits down on the chair in a really natural, fluid way, exactly like a normal person would. The motion is smooth and the physics look convincing. Similarly, if you give it the prompt, a person runs forward, look at how natural the running animation is. The character runs forward with proper arm swing, leg movement, and body dynamics. It looks genuinely impressive. Here's another one. A person jumps upward with both legs twice. The resulting video shows the person jumping exactly as described, two clean jumps with proper takeoff and landing mechanics. You can also generate concurrent or sequential actions. For example, a person performs a lunge stretch hand on hip. In the resulting video, the character is stretching with hands on hips exactly as you'd expect. Exercise poses like this come out very naturally. You can even get really precise with the actions. A person walks forward, moving arms and legs while looking left and right simultaneously. The 3D character perfectly walks forward, swings its arms and legs, and looks left and right simultaneously. The coordination is really well done. They've also shown game character actions. You can see characters holding a sword and performing different combat moves, or acting like they're holding a gun, or even dying animations. There are hand-to-hand -hand fighting animations. You can also animate different types of characters. Here's a Spider-Man style character doing kickboxing. Here's a skeleton character walking like you'd see in a game. This is a hit reaction animation, and it also looks natural. The range of what you can generate with this is pretty extensive. Now for the practical stuff, the code and model weights have been released. Complete installation and usage instructions are available. The full 1 billion parameter model and the light 0.46 billion parameter model are both available for download. Here's the best part. Both models are incredibly lightweight. The total download size for both the light and the standard model combined is around 6 gigabytes, which means you could probably run the model with as little as 4 gigabytes of VRAM. That's a massive advantage for accessibility. For a 1 billion parameter model generating high-quality 3D motion, that's impressively efficient. I'll drop the link to the project page in the description so you can check it out, download the models, and start generating your own 3D character animations. So, that wraps up today's video covering these three fresh tool releases. If you found this useful, drop a like and let me know in the comments which tool you're most excited to try out. I'm also posting daily updates on X about new AI tools and research papers as soon as they drop, so follow me there if you want to stay ahead of the curve. Links in the description below. Alright, that's it for now. I'll catch you in the next one.